Hello, and welcome to our Backyard Vineyard Project. We're in the process of building the Gavilan Hills Vineyard here at Paradise Ranch. Unfortunately, we've been delayed again because of this damn weather. It's about 50 degrees outside and raining, so we've been unable to go outside for a few days. We would love to have you join us in our adventure. Please subscribe to our channel to follow along. This video is essentially an appendix to our novel that we're going through. We're going to be talking about essentially the pests in our vineyard. The pests in our vineyard primarily are rabbits and gophers. Now the rabbits, we can handle them with the sleeves that we're going to put on the one year vines. And we do like our coyotes running around outside. I know they handle them as well. Let me start with this. We're not gopher experts. We're not gopher hunters. We're not exterminators. This is just simply the experience we've had over the last 30 years of dealing with gophers here in Southern California. Now, you hear about gophers and moles and voles and trolls. In California, we have gophers. We don't have voles and moles and all those other things we hear about. And I'll put a link below to know what the difference is, but we have gophers. And if you're not willing to kill gophers, then you shouldn't be in the vineyard business. It's very disheartening if you go outside in the morning, you're walking your vineyard, and you notice a four-year-old vine that's been working well for you has been chewed up and pulled out of the ground. It's not something that's very pleasant and you're gonna be awful pissed. So this is just a formality you're gonna to have to go through in dealing with and building a vineyard. Now gophers can cause long-term damage to your lawns, your gardens, as everyone knows. But there are many tools available, many different kinds of tools available for dealing with gophers. And once you understand the gopher, <laughs> think like the gopher, become the gopher, just like a uh, hey, caddy shack, then it's a little bit easier to handle and control the gopher problem. Gophers typically burrow two, three, four inches below ground. Um, they never really go beyond about 12 inches, which is gonna be really good for our vineyard. Um, they, they don't ever hibernate. Gophers work year round. You may not see them as much and sometimes, especially when it's hot out or it's cold, it's the fall and spring when you really start to see them. And they're usually loners. Gophers don't pair up. It's, if you find a gopher, typically it's one gopher in the neighborhood. So, or in that part of the lawn. So it's easy to watch and figure out what's going on. There's really two categories of deterrence for gophers. You've got passive deterrence and you've got aggressive deterrence. And I've used a lot of different ones and I know some of them work well, some of them are a joke. So let me kind of go through some of them that we know about. People say that take your dog poop and stick it down the holes when you see them. Not sure what that does, except the gopher just plugs up that hole and goes somewhere else. Um, you've heard people say, well, just put a garden hose down there, just flood them out. And I've tried that too, but all that does is make your yard really soggy and sometimes when you walk on it afterwards, you're gonna sink into holes where you filled up with water. So that's just not something that I've, that I've had any success with. But things that work well, for example, when I was planting some of the fruit trees here in the back and, and in my previous home, um, we were planting some palm trees and a few other things. We use netting. Now you can buy um, what are called uh, root guard baskets. You can buy baskets that are netting. Some are biodegradable, some are wire. This is the kind I always use, which is half inch wire. I would make it into a circle with a bottom on it. And that would give me a screen around the roots so that the gophers don't get to my roots. In the grand scheme of things, this is really a bit expensive if you're going to do this in a vineyard. And it's a lot of work to make these screens to go around all the vineyards. One of my favorite, by far favorite, deterrent, passive deterrent, are these gopher spikes. These gopher spikes are solar powered. It used to be, they ran on batteries. 
and then you know, I had to change the batteries every few months and it was driving me crazy because I never knew. But these are now solar powered. I've got some spikes that I bet have been running for a year now. Um, they get worn out and in the sun. They're waterproof. You can stick them in the grass. Um, I stick them around the outside edge of the property. Uh, but how these work is that a, they're purely sonic, they call it, but it's sound. It puts a vibration through the ground with a noise that supposedly drives the gophers crazy. You can hear the noise. And when it, as, you're, as the gophers come into the property or looking around, they decide there's way too much partying going on in this yard. Too much noise, I can't sleep at night because I keep hearing this damn noise going off. So the gophers will go elsewhere. It's a purely a deterrent in trying to keep the gophers away. And it works pretty well. The princess of the house has a negative because I've got like, there it goes again. I've got a, I probably have 40 of these around the property in different places. And when you're in the backyard and it's a nice quiet evening and the sun's setting, all you hear is that noise. And since I've got 30 or 40 of them around, that's what you hear over and over again is that vibration sounding noise. Funny thing is, is my sister, see, right in the middle of your conversations, that's what you hear. My sister was here one day and she goes, how come I keep hearing a horn honking way off in the distance? So it's mostly irritating. I move them about once a month. I go around and I move them to different locations. The whole goal is to make the property um, an irritation for the gophers. So once the gophers come in, they think there's too much partying going on, too much noise, and we're gonna leave. So that's what I use. I like these gopher spikes. So using these spikes work really well for a deterrent, but you can't use that alone. But I use castor oil as another deterrent. Castor oil, when you spray it on the grass, it makes the grass unpleasant. It tastes bad and it gives the gophers indigestion. So they just think, of, there's too much noise here, it doesn't taste good, I'm gonna go find someplace else to go. So let me explain to you oil real quick and I can talk about some more stuff later. In the directions it says take, I think, three or four tablespoons, you put it in a gallon of water, then you put it into a Hudson sprayer. I have way too much grass. I am not walking around my entire property with a Hudson sprayer. So I use one of these miracle Go garden feeders. I fill it up about halfway with castor oil, hook it up to the hose, and I simply water the lawn. I can go through, oh, I, I figured it out earlier, probably 3,000 feet, 4,000 square feet for each one of these. So you fill it up halfway, put in some water, put it on the hose, spray it, and it works well. The one negative is this is the only one I use for castor oil, only because it clogs up, the castor oil clogs it up, it's all greasy, it's still real sticky. So I use my other garden feeder for my miracle Grow, but for the castor oil, I have one just for the castor oil. So besides using the spikes, using the castor oil to make it taste bad, one other thing I use, this, I put in this little jug so you can see it. You probably can't see real well what that is. That's a bunch of wine bottles, beer bottles, olive bottles, any kind of glass bottles I can get. I, I break them up. And I use this to plant my plants. For example, when I do the vineyard, I'm gonna put some glass down, put some dirt on that, add some, add the vines in, put some more glass in. I want to make the vines very unappealing. Now this I do myself. I'm probably not gonna have enough glass when I do my 200 vines. So you can actually buy bags of core, what they call coarse crushed glass. So I'm gonna mix some of the stuff we can buy and I'll put links to all this stuff down below. But putting glass around your roots, those gophers, when they come up to it and start going in, they don't, they don't like biting into glass. It does not do well for them. There are also some, let's call them natural deterrents. Plants, there are plants that gophers don't like, and I have proof of that 
with, with one of these. The other ones I have problems with because they're just not that big. But if you do things like sage and thyme, the, the strong smell keeps gophers away, but that doesn't cover very much area, really, when you're dealing with, with a large property. Daffodils is another one. Daffodils are nice because they flower, um, they bloom, but they, when you plant them in the fall, they bloom in the winter, in the spring, and by shoot, April, May, they're done because it got too hot for them. What I use is I use geraniums. I've got geraniums in two of my planters, and there are never any gophers in those planters, ever. Geraniums are very strong smelling, and I'm gonna use geraniums around the outside of the vineyard when I start planting as another natural deterrent. So when we're talking about passive deterrents, one other one are my friendly owls here. George and Gracie. Now George and Gracie usually sit up on top of the clubhouse overlooking the property. I have no idea if this thing even works, but I like the way they look up there. They claim that that keeps away birds and rabbits and gophers, but I'm not sure about it. They look, I think just from the scary look on their face, <laughs> would, would keep anybody away, I guess. So we talked about the passive, now let's talk about the aggressive deterrence. Once I get a gopher, this year, not too bad, I think I had three gophers. I think they're gone now. Maybe not, but who knows, I'll find out in the next week or so. But I'm pretty sure I got rid of all the gophers on the property. The first deterrent, aggressive deterrent, I would love to have, but I don't, is a barn owl. I'm going to be building a, a barn owl nesting sometime next summer to put up because I want them in the fall when they start looking around for a I want them to pick my nest. Barn owl, haven't got that yet. The other deterrent I have, no, can't see her, she's sound asleep at my feet here. Fiona, she'll spend sometimes an hour or two staring at a hole while a gopher is moving it and she'll get one or go for a year, maybe two, but it's so funny. So she's not, she's not that dependable to get gophers out. What I use are really two different things. I've tried using gopher gasser things. They look like little dynamite sticks. They look, they look like little uh, dynamite sticks. And what you do is you light them and you find a hole and you stick them in the hole. Well, you find the hole first, then you light it and you stick it down in the hole. Some people swear by these. Um, other people kind of agree with say that, well, you put the gas in the hole, the gopher is just gonna pack the hole and keep the gas away from them. So I've never really been able to prove that these work, but I must admit, there are some people that swear by these. The uh, Second deterrent are traps. Now, you know, there's all kinds of traps. This is the one I use. This is the style I use. Um, this is a lethal trap. There are lots of non-lethal traps. There's lots of ways of trapping gophers and releasing them and stuff like that. But I use, I use traps, um, but not very often. My brother swears by these traps. He says these are the best things. So I want to tell you a story. My brother and his wife were sleeping in bed one night, about two o'clock in the morning. They have a medium-sized dog. It's a Weimaraner named Reagan. He gets up, decides he wants to go down and do his business outside, and he does his thing and starts looking around the yard. A few minutes later, my brother hears this noise coming up the stairs. There's that noise right there. Reagan comes up, jumps on the bed, drops the trap between them on the pillow. The trap happens to have a dead gopher with, um, let's say, not to be offensive, the dead gopher had some maggots all over it. <laughs> so my brother and his wife had to change the bed, the pillowcases, clean the floor, at two o'clock in the morning because the bed was covered with, uh, let's say, some items that they didn't want to have at two o'clock in the morning. 
That's one of the reasons why I don't use traps very much. Fiona does her thing around the property, and with Fiona doing her thing around the property, especially at night, I don't need her carrying around and digging holes where there's a dead gopher. So, condolences to my brother and his wife, but <laughs> it was a great story to hear. I will put a link down below to some, you know, um, lethal and non-lethal type of trap. I've never used a non-lethal, and tell you the truth, I don't really use this trap very much. And, and what I use primarily are um, gopher bait. These little pellets look like, they look like rabbit pellets, what they look like. And it seems to work really well, but I use it in combination with a couple of other passive maneuvers to be able to get to the gopher in a minute. For the few gophers that actually make it into my yard, past the spikes, past the castor oil, and they're in the yard, what I do is I do two things. First, I spray. For example, I sprayed with castor oil about a month ago. I waited two weeks, and then I sprayed the yard again. And I'm going to show you some pictures here. What happens is, is it pisses off the gophers. The gophers get like really irritated and make a whole bunch of holes. You'll see just like this time on the two gophers I had, they, mu they must have made 20 holes a piece because they're trying to figure out a way to get away from the castor oil. What that does is that gives me the perfect opportunity to walk around, find the perfect one or two holes, and then I pour in the bait. That makes it really easy to get rid of the gophers. The gophers then die underground, become part of the ecosystem, and everything works good. Like I said, this year, when we first moved here, we had, shoot, probably six or eight gophers that were driving me crazy. Now, I get one or two gophers a year that come in, usually in the fall time, and I'm able to get rid of them using the castor oil and the bait. Hardly ever use the traps, but with the vineyard, I'm gonna to have to maybe start using traps if I have gophers up there. So what am I going to be doing specifically for the vineyard? Now, I'm, remember I said I'm planting 200 vines this year. So the first thing I'm going to do, as I'm planting the vines, I'm going to be putting in glass. The glass will be layered on the bottom of the vines and then on somewhere on the top of the vines, on the root part of the vines down low. Now the vines, when vines grow, vines will grow very deep. And there are pictures on, on the internet you can see of vines that two three-year-old vines that have six, eight, even 20-foot um, root systems. So I want the root systems to go as deep as possible. Now remember, gophers only go down 12 inches or so. So if I can get the vines starting at 12 inches with glass around them, and once they get deeper, the gophers shouldn't get to my vines down deep. So now that I've got the glass around my roots, they're going down nice and deep, that should be a deterrent for the gophers. Plus, I'm gonna have my spikes. I'm probably gonna have 10, 12 spikes intermixed around within the vineyard to keep them out. And then the third thing will be in my geraniums. I'm planting probably 20 geraniums around sporadically around the vineyard in different spots. So I'm gonna be doing a deterrent of glass in the holes, I've got the spikes to make it noisy, and then I've got the geraniums. So with those three, I should be able to keep them out. I wanna make the property, like I said, unappealing as much as I can. But if for some reason I get a gopher, then I'll go to the aggressive of putting in um, traps or the bait, because I'm not gonna lose a vine to those damn gophers. If you have any comments or suggestions on ways that you get rid of your gophers, please let me know. I mean, this is what I've done over the years. It seems to be working. I would love to find easier ways of doing it, but this is what we got. Well, let me get a little old school on you. When you grow up with a lot of brothers, and way back when, when we were growing up out here in the country, we had one other way to get rid of gophers and rabbits and lizards. 
We used to sit on the back porch and use our 22, our single shot 22. This is the original one we had from way back when. Or BB guns. And we would sit there and pick off those pesky little rabbits and gophers. Can't quite do that today. Not quite the environment. Plus, we can't wait hours for them to decide to stick up their head. But I have one question for you. I grew up in the country. I mean, I grew up in a very, very rural area. We had, now I'm gonna date myself, we had, we had a party line phone number. In other words, on our street, there was like three homes for about a mile, and all three of us shared the same phone line. So our mother never let us talk on the phone like people do today. You pick up the phone, you make a phone call, hang it up, because <laughs> there might be somebody else on the phone or somebody else wants to use it. Remember party lines? And the other thing, which the princess of the house doesn't believe, is we didn't have trash men. We didn't have this trash guy coming around the neighborhood picking up trash in the middle of nowhere. So we had, we had burn days. I, for some reason, I remember that Tuesday were burn days. So on Tuesday, we take all the trash that we've had all week, we've been collecting, put it in a, in a 55 drum in the backyard, and burn the trash. How else are you gonna get rid of trash? That's what we did. <laughs> Anybody else burn trash on burn days or have party lines? Let me know in the comments below. Nice to have you with us. Well, that's the end of this short video. It's just an appendix on how we get rid of gophers, dealing with gophers. Really, the passive way is the way I like is because it keeps them out. They don't even wanna come here because, like I said, we've got a party going on in the ground. It doesn't taste good and you get indigestion if you hang around too long. So that's the best way. And if I have to, I go to more aggressive means to get rid of my gophers. Please follow along on our adventure. Please click the link below, subscribe, and join us on our adventure. This is, we're just getting started, so hang in there. This is Jeff signing off. Goodbye until next time.